Hi, everyone. I'm here at the Lean In Pakistan Foundation story number 28 here at the Barack Center. We are so excited and delighted to be interviewing the amazing Hina Sadek, the first female partner at uh, Yusuf Adel, which was officially uh, affiliated for many years with Deloitte and a big four audit firm. She's uh, one of the queens of audit in Pakistan, as well as a true inspiration for so many. And today we're gonna learn about her journey through the corporate circles to reach such high heights, as well as how she supports and uh, has created a sisterhood of other women through the Lean In Pakistan ICAP circle of which she's chairing. And essentially ICAP has a women's wing that she founded and co-founded. And this circle is functioning and uh, bringing the Lean In Pakistan tools and Lean In tools to bring women together in this sisterhood. How are you, Hina? I'm doing very well, Alhamdulillah, Tara. How are you? Fabulous. And a belated Eid Mubarak to you, of course. Khair Mubarak to you. It was a long break. Yes, they definitely gave those of us in the corporate world time to reflect and spend with our families, which was very, very kind. So anyhow, today we are going to focus on you. You are quite the star and everyone is dying to learn how Hina Sadiq became Hina Sadiq. And uh, so do tell us what it was like for you as a little girl. Did you grow up in Karachi? Yes, I did. Born and bred in Karachi. And as a little girl, did you say at birth, I'm going to be an auditor? Or how did that story unfold? No, it didn't unfold quite that way. But yes, I was an ambitious girl from the word go. What I was very, very lucky with is that Allah Ta'ala blessed me with a set of parents who wanted nothing but the best for their little girl. Uh, I come from a very conservative Maimon family, but my father, unlike in those times, was brought up in a convent and uh, with uh, American and Canadian pastors. And that gave him the kind of vision that a lot of men in our family never had. So from the word go, he was always and uh, he always had this idea which everyone actually buffed that, you know, his daughter is almost going to be as equal as his son. So it was his, uh, his support that gave my dream the wings to be where I am today. So he encouraged me what? all the way when I wanted. Uh, can you hear me, Tara? So, yes. 100%. So uh, my, my father and my mother also supported him. She was begrudgingly uh, in, the, in the initial years, but later on she became a part of the team. And both of them together sort of harnessed my journey through. Uh, they faced a lot of opposition from the family, but whenever... The, their expectation of me was only to, you know, concentrate on my studies, uh, do well in life. As long as I was happy, they were okay with it. So whether I wanted to become a doctor, which was my earlier dream, and then I chose child accountancy, which was a very, very grueling profession for a woman in those times. They were with me throughout. And when I, in those days, you know, going to Korangi and Landi and places like that, which were unheard of for women, and when I used to come back home and I used to tell them that now I've been posted to Landi and my father would not bat an eyelid. And he'd say, Bas, kursi ke jana. Just say your prayers and you go. And, you know, fly. He, he was very, very proud when I qualified my, uh, my exams. Now, obviously, so I that's, too come that's about my trip. I too, as you know, come from a very conservative Maimon family. And hearing your journey, I think the audience may not actually appreciate how significant it is that your family is letting you fly to Landi or be posted there or so forth. It's, it's actually quite remarkable with such backgrounds as ours. 
Yes, it's it's a very conservative background, especially when I talk about the the times when I was studying. I was the only girl. I was the first girl ever in my entire family to have appeared for O levels exam. Now it is a very ordinary thing, but in that time, it was nobody had even heard of the O levels in my family. I was the first one ever. Then when I went into college, a co-ed college, no girl before me had ever gone to a co-ed college. Uh, to the extent that some of my cousins actually disowned me, who were studying in that college, and they would never acknowledge that I'm related to them. Your male cousins. That is the kind of yes, th that is the kind of conservative background that I'm talking about, and I could only do it, Tara. because both my parents were relentless in their pursuit of of my education to them i could have wanted to go on the moon and they would have if they could they would have granted my wish so and and that in itself is also quite remarkable because people seeing you today yes. um a partner at a big four audit firm is no joke yet this background of that at college is is very real and as real a part of your journey and also i think um people may not understand that it was actually hurtful for you when this happened you weren't born with such thick skin that you didn't notice when you were on campus even if you were above it you 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 didn't like that you weren't i'm sure it was painful uh no not really because when uh, my parents had always taught me one thing that you know whatever we are trying to do is against the norm people are going to talk and th those are not going to be pleasant things but it is your journey and it is your goal and you have to concentrate and we are standing behind you if you have any problem come to us we will try to resolve it for you uh if anyone hurts you don't be hurtful in revenge come to us and we will sort out the issue so they gave me the kind of an environment in which i could flourish as a person to to them because i was a girl or a woman did not change the fact that they thought that allah taala had blessed me with certain talents and they just wanted me to uh, harness those carve a niche for myself go out there prove myself to all those who were barking against me they always used to say they don't matter what matters is your success your journey what you will achieve in the end and that is so remarkable in itself i think that you know their upbringing of you is yes. truly aspirational and inspirational can i as you talked about the obstacles that your parents faced can you shed a bit of light on that as well you see uh again because i think we have an international audience uh, i would just like to explain how conservative my family background was uh in in our pa in in our family girls normally uh get education till 14 grade only and then they get married and then they have kids uh, a lot of those relationships are not pleasant and then when my parents decided that no they are going to break the norm and they were going to send me to a college or to a professional education center uh it, you know in in other parts of the world i'm sure where women uh, by the way i stood first in my high school exams in my whole city in the the entire city of karachi i'm a position holder uh in in the high school exams so uh, normally when people achieve that much uh, people around them appreciate it encourage it and my parents were always subject to who's going to marry her because she's so educated who's going to marry her and my parents always used to laugh and say that whoever wants to marry her will have to you know match her talent we are never going to short sell her on the name of marriage which was in in itself a big big thing in our part of the world and especially in our families and today um the the thing that 
Tara that has changed now is that the youth of young girls who are actually daughters of my friends and my cousins who got married early now look up to me and come to me for career advice, and uh, they tell me that you know we want to be like you and what route to take and what schools to attend and all the rest. So that is the change that even one individual can bring to the lives of so many people around them. So, you know, it is always said now that when you educate a boy, you educate an individual. When you educate a girl, you educate an entire generation. So I, I think that is so true that an educated woman and an educated girl and, and a well-placed girl can open so many doors for other women who are lined up behind her. And how does that make you feel? Humbled. Very humbled. I, well, I, I think you... that, you know, I'm the chosen one from Allah Ta'ala because he chose me to, he gave me that talent. He gave me the parents that I got. I could have gotten the short end of the stick also, Tara. And there would have been nothing that I could have been able to do about. But he blessed me. He blessed me with parents who went out on a limb to, you know, make me where I am today. Uh, he gave them the means, the vision. He gave me the talent, the skill set. Uh, I, I just feel blessed and I feel very, very humble. Well, you are blessed. Can you talk a little bit about how you then built your own personal life and how that happened, how that part of your journey? Uh, the pers my personality, oh, obviously, my parents, my teachers, well, the personal life, I'm my saying, education. I'm saying you're oh, married. Oh, my personal so life. Like, yes. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, again, uh, that's a story uh, that that can take another session. But yes, I was married once, but uh, not happy in that relationship. So I chose to walk out of it. Again, the financial independence that I got because of my qualification and my job enabled me to take that decision. And to because again, in my opinion, Allah Ta'ala did not uh, um, give me this life to be miserable. So I, I took that route where my, my self-respect and my, um, my existence was, was not questioned. And today, when I look back again, that was a phase of my life that taught me again a lot, uh, taught me a lot of humility, uh, problem solving and... Uh, Today, I, Alhamdulillah, have a very, I have a cat who's like my own child. And uh, I have a wonderful circle of friends uh, who've been with me through thick and thin. Uh, I have friends whom I can share my uh, grief and sorrow and problems with. Uh, I found Allah Ta'ala on the way also. I pray better now. I try to be a better Muslim. So all that came through very, very dark times in my life. And I believe that, you know, that strength that I got from Allah Ta'ala during that journey is again helping me today also. I think that that is such an inspiration, how your courage, how your, um, how your courage and your absolute convictions have been so important to your choices, how you have actually made life choices by your parents. How has yes, the, that is very true, Tara. And how has the lean in concept of leaning into your career, fulfilling your dreams and ambitions, being unapologetically yourself? How has that gelled with you? Because you seem such a true lean-in woman. Because it is a 
strictly at, at a given point in time, it was a very male oriented profession. And I could see that one of the strengths that men had was their networking skills. Put their comrades in need. Uh, when when I uh, joined, I, I looked for that circle of sisterhood. And uh, even during my difficult times and even during my career times, uh, the lean in now it has become a concept and now that I've gotten to know about it. But in a very informal way, the women around me rallied to, you know, uh, give me that kind of quiet strength to be able to combat those things on a daily basis. Uh, one of my teachers uh, to date, I'm still in contact with her and uh, she, you know, was, was so instrumental. And today, uh, when I am in a position where I think I can do something for the women, for the girls working with us, I just sort of try to create that circle where they feel comfortable discussing their problems, their aspirations, their dreams. And I can, you know, sort of guide them or nudge them in the right direction, telling them from my own life experience uh, what they should be doing, what is the better path for them, you know, guiding them through. So it's, it's a wonderful thing to be a part of this kind of a, a sisterhood and this kind of a system. And with ICAP, where you're one of the founder members of the Women's Wing, and of course you chair the Lean in Pakistan ICAP circle, which is for women in ICAP, who you're available for and available to help. How does having women in your profession give you a strength because you are one of the very first to reach your level. So most of the other women there, most are looking up to you. So in a circle which you chair, do you gain any strength from them as well? Uh, I'm sorry, could you, could you come again, Tara? I lost your connection in the middle for a bit. Sure. I was saying that at ICAP, you are one of the first pillars at ICAP and you co-founded the women's wing of ICAP and you chair the Lean in Pakistan ICAP circle, which is a sisterhood of women in ICAP who you bring together for being there for each other. Since you're one of the most accomplished and uh, at the upper echelon of achievement in the audit field as a female in your circle most of the other women are looking up to you so in such a circle that you're chairing are you gaining any strength from them as well yes tara every time i meet younger individuals in my circle uh, it's such a delight and it's like a breath of fresh air and I think that's what keeps me going also. You know, they come with such high hopes and uh, uh, such bright ideas. And uh, obviously, while we've been around for such a long time, uh, that you start to sort of fade away and um, not be interested. And then they buck us up and they bring new ideas to the table, uh, new ideas to engage more females in our circle. Uh, engage with the younger students in the charter accountancy profession, how we can make the environment better for them. Uh, we even like in our circle, we came up with a work inclusion guide for women in which we are trying to now circulate it to all the top firms in Pakistan uh, to for them to, you know, uh, make uh, the work environment more uh, conducive to female employment. You know, having laws and policies around uh, uh, sexual harassment and uh, what is, you know, in, in, uh, in a lot of ways, uh, our men do not have any clue what even qualifies for sexual harassment. So we are trying to build that awareness up. And this was a, a, a program that was brought on by one of the younger members of our circle. And we've managed to publish that guide. And now we are trying to implement it in all the large firms in Pakistan. It's very, very important work that you're doing and has significance 
beyond even this moment in time because it's uh, evolving the community in a way that protects its members, both male and female. Because as you mentioned, some of the men don't even understand. And the co-ed yes. work environment, even though it's extremely and very quickly evolving to be very much co-ed, is still new for a lot of the men from the families that they come from as much as for the women. So as you were in this journey to reach partnership, there must have been moments that were either challenging or surprising or maybe both. Leaned in to your career at different stages. Uh, yes, but the one surprising thing, Tara, has been that during this journey, while I met women who you know, empowered me, who encouraged me. I met a lot of men also who played very, very important part in my journey. Uh, I, I actually, I, because of my circumstances and everything, I was away from the profession for uh, for some years. And I was working uh, as, as a professional teacher and a mentor. Uh, then I, when I joined the firm, I was working on flexi hours. Now, at that point in time, and I'm talking about 2007. Uh, flexi hours was unheard of in our part of the world, and especially in our profession. And nobody knew how it would work. But my, at that point in time, my, my boss and then became my mentor and almost as close to me as a father figure, Mr. Usman Ghani Adwani. He said, no, you will work for, you will come to the office for four hours and then you can go back home. Uh, go with your familial uh, responsibilities and keep working at home on your laptop. And, you know, that was such an alien concept at that point in time. And this was but long before COVID. Because long he before any of it. I yes, long before COVID. Uh, yes, I took a pay cut. Uh, yes, I compromised on my promotion. I'm not going to deny that. But he again told me that your working is important. The, the, the emoluments and everything will follow through. But you keep at it. He gave me that courage. So that was a, a bit of a challenging part. Then obviously accepting me in the fold of partnership. Today when I sit at the table, there are 13 men and I'm the only woman. And when I was sitting for my info a partnership, uh, I was asked that what will happen to the partnership once you get married? And I laughingly said that I think every one of you is married. When your marriage has not affected the partnership, how is my marriage going to affect the partnership? So there was a very funny anecdote. And then people would, at, at times, you know, they would say that, you know, diversity is, is the new um, call sign. So you are progressing because you are a female. And I, I used to be very offended at that. And I used to say that, you know, uh, I think if, if it is because of my gender, then I should have progressed far earlier. And I've been meeting all these roadblocks because I am a female and I'm talented and you don't want me to succeed. So, yes, but there have been encouraging stories all the way. Today, when I look back, Tara, it has been a journey full of life, experience, colors. After all, black is also a color, isn't it? Absolutely. And, you know, you're sharing these stories and you shared earlier that because of your upbringing and a very strategic upbringing it was, you didn't have a thin skin during a lot of these moments. In fact, you always had a way to defend yourself, to explain yourself without explaining yourself, you know, ways to really clearly let it be known that um, you were a professional first and foremost, and you knew your worth and value. I think a lot of the, the things that you've been saying convey a strong sense of self-esteem and self-worth, which clearly came from your childhood and your upbringing, and also your from here. Yes, it did. It did. And I think it is very important for women, especially in Pakistan and in third world countries, to understand that 
Allah Ta'ala has blessed everyone with a set of talent. And that talent is different for everyone. For me, it could be the numbers. For you, it is putting people together. You are so good at it, Tara. Uh, for a lot of people, like I met, I've been meeting so many people because of the scene in circle and everything. There are so many women who've taken midway career breaks to do something that they are so passionate about. Something like cooking or baking, because that gives them pleasure. But at the end of the day, I think what we women need to understand is that we are individuals in our own right. We, we are talented and nobody, nobody in this world should be allowed to put us down. You know, when people put us down, it should be an impetus to get up and get up better like a phoenix which rises from the ashes. It, it's very important. And so is there moments when you feel vulnerable? Yes, they are. Are there moments when yes, you I feel do. vulnerable? Yes. Can you, can you feel comfortable sharing one? Uh, a lot, I can, there's so many, whenever I walk into a meeting, you know, and when there are all these men staring at me and waiting for me to, you know, sort of fumble, to give them that leeway to, you know, where they can pounce on me and they can show me my place in life. I meet a lot of individuals like that, by the way, but, um, at that point in time, I yes, I do feel vulnerable. And I feel, you know, as if they're setting me up for a fall. And then I, I just put up my guard and I, I say a small prayer and I say that I'm good enough for them. Hannah, like very recently, excuse me, one incident, Tara, which happened to me during Ramazan. And I would really want to, uh, you know, recollect it. Uh, I was, we, we were going as a family uh, to some place in Boat Basin for Iftari. And uh, I was, because I was coming directly from the office, I was in my own car. And uh, when I parked the car and when I wanted to get down, uh, another car behind me, the person in that car started uh, a fight with one of the people on the street. And I thought that because there's such a big crowd, I should keep sitting in the car until that crowd dissipates and I would be able to get out of my car. And then those people started fighting. And just like it happens in films, they started picking each other up and throwing them on my car while I was sitting inside the whole time. It was like a full drawn out Hollywood brawl on my car. And I locked the doors and I started praying that, you know, it's as if someone is going to break through the door and going to pull me out. I really felt vulnerable at that time. I think that the, the reality is so much more interesting than if it had been fiction. You know, the kinds of things that happen are very unpredictable and interesting and surprising. And your journey is so fascinating, Hina. Because do you really think that when you walk into a room, even now, the, there are people waiting for you to fumble? Yes. Yes. And why? Why do they want you to fumble? You see, I, I now believe um, it is actually lessening with the younger generation, the, the generation that came after us and with us also because they're used to that co-ed environment and they're used to working with women. But I'm talking about certain people who belong to the older generation. And for that, uh, Tara, I'm sorry, but I'm being a bit personal. I found your father to be a very interesting character. I met him, I've, I've met him quite a few times. And uh, initially, he, he, he was very, very, uh, uh, sort of he used to measure me up all the time and I used to tell them I uh, 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 up, it's not going to happen Ravik up you're not going to set me up for a fall but he was so open that I could at least express it to him that I can understand what he's trying to do 
but it was done in a very good way because he wanted me again i felt uh, even though i shared a very different relationship with him but i felt that he wanted me to you know excel to do better he used to goad me into doing better yeah he was one of the biggest feminists you could ever meet globally not just yes. here and he was very proud yes. of you and fatherly towards you and encouraged you and you know he he definitely um you used to say you'd have 45 minute meetings with him mentoring you and spending time with you and encouraging you and you know uh definitely uh he favored you a lot with work as well because he just wanted you to excel in a fatherly way yes 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 we shared a brilliant camaraderie and i used to look forward to our meetings and i would always call him that you look like a teddy bear but you've got claws <laughs> no he's a he he's definitely a, a a man who builds many 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 leaders women like yourself but also many many leaders he just he knew how to bring out the best in an individual personalized to that individual so that they could soar and he saw unlimited heights for each individual it was quite an extraordinary yes. story but um where do you yes. go from here now that's Hina? so What's next for you Tara. that's so true What's next for you from You bit too much I didn't get you can you come again please Where do you go from here next you've achieved so much What's uh, next for Hina Sadiq I want to continue doing the same uh, Tara I want to I want to continue doing more of what I I want uh, I want to continue with whatever my journey has been I want to continue to inspire to help to be that beacon in somebody's journey um uh, I want to be if if you were to ask me I want to be um a very pleasant memory for everyone who's ever met me in their lives they the when someone walks up to me uh, a student of mine or somebody who has trained with me uh, they come up and they say that you know this very small thing that you once said has has changed my life or has brought such positive change in my life i i feel as if i have fulfilled my purpose uh, in life so i want to continue doing more of the same fantastic you're such an inspiration for all a true lean in woman and i must say you're such an important part of lean in pakistan community being the icap chair of the women and bringing that community of auditors together in a very exciting way we're so proud of you and so thankful to you thank you thank you so much thank you so Bye for now. Thank you so much for a wonderful interview. Please take care of yourself. Bye.